Jake Tran is a YouTuber who describes himself as someone who makes documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. He's accumulated an impressive 1.4 million subscribers of making this type of content, with his most popular videos being exposés on large companies like Nestle and even government organizations like the CIA. These videos have been largely well received, despite being on such controversial topics. However, in the past few months, Jake and his channel have been facing more and more criticism as audiences begin to take notice of the growing trend of shady business deals that seem to contradict the message of his videos. And today, we're here to take a look at that. On January 30th of 2014, Jake would create his account. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, never mind. This is kind of relevant. If you're interested in this whole origin story or whatever, his video, YouTubers will never tell you this, goes into detail about everything you need to know. I was going to be the Linus Tech Tips of the Taekwondo world. So I launched my first channel, a channel that will remain unnamed because I find it very cringy. And I ended up making videos on Taekwondo exercises, highlight reels of competitions I would go to, gear reviews, and obviously it didn't work. Cool stuff. The point is, is that Jake was mostly controversy free. He hadn't done anything to shake his viewers' trust in him. That is until January 19th, 2022, or, or probably even before that. I've had to reread this part like three different times, but uh, moving on. On that date, he uploaded Walmart, the most cutthroat monopoly in the world. The contents of the video are mostly unimportant, except for the sponsor, which many of his audience found to be a surprise. Are most of these NFTs useless? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean you can't make money off of them. That's where Project Metamux comes in. And this is free by the way, so you're gonna want to stick around. Metamux is a tight-knit community tailored made for beginners who are looking to make money in the NFT space. And within their Discord, they have what's called their Whale Bot Tracker, a tool that monitors the wallets of crypto whales and sends you a Discord alert every single time they buy an NFT project. Once you get alerted, you can check out the NFT project they bought, buy it yourself if you want, and sell at a hopefully higher price. And the best part is that this Discord is 100% free right now with the link below. The catch is that when their Metamux NFT project launches, the Whalebot and the other tools and resources in the Discord will only be available to the holders of the NFT, which has a very low supply of only 4,444 Metamux, so you're gonna want to get in while you can for free. They're also doing a giveaway for 100 whitelist spots within their Discord. They plan to mint this January. All you gotta do is join the Metamux Discord for free by going to jake.yt slash metamux with the link below. It literally costs $0 and you have zero obligation to buy anything. And it shouldn't shock anybody that shilling for a sketchy NFT project uh, didn't go over well with his fans. You can't trash Walmart and then pitch NFT scams in the same video. You're too talented for this. 4.6 thousand likes. You're doing an outstanding job covering destructive market ploys. What a great video. You should do one about NFTs. You wouldn't believe the kind of shit they're doing. While these are some of the top comments, most of the comments from what I've seen aren't actually discussing the topic of the video, just voicing their disappointment that Jake would promote something so shady. Something I found interesting is that the links to the so-called meta monks have been removed from the description. I tried looking up these meta monks to see like what happened to them as of August, but their Twitter account has been inactive for half a year, and the link in their bio leads to a 403 forbidden error page. Safe to say that this particular sponsor wasn't very legitimate, but surely it was just a one-time thing, right? Just, just a little slip up. Well, on February 5th, one month later, he uploaded the evil business of NFTs, which coincidentally had nothing to do with the previous video I talked about. The angle from which this video tackles NFTs shouldn't be very surprising based on the title. In the weird world of NFTs, there is something sinister going on where criminals are making off with millions with what's called a rug pull. While most of the video is dedicated to how rug pulls work, to be fair, he does talk about the potential of NFTs regarding the future of the internet. That's why the sponsor of this video is Cunning Wolf Society, an NFT project. If Jake expected this to fly with his audience, well, he was sorely mistaken. People were, again, noticeably upset, and the like to dislike ratio reflected it. And to quote myself from the last video, the comment section wasn't much better. For a channel founded on exposing the world's biggest scams, Jake's support of NFT feels like something straight out of the onion. 6.8 thousand likes. Incredible. You built a fan base of exposing scams are now convincing that same fanboys to join yours. Bravo, sir. 4.4 thousand likes. Funny how the NFT advisor never mentioned that the creator of the Cunning Wolf Society project is anonymous and is barely known on Twitter. This was one of the ways that the video taught you to detect rug pulls. On top of that, if you go to the Twitter project page, you can see them posting this video saying, not all projects are created equally. Jake seems to know the difference, followed by the link. In other words, using this channel as a validation for the scam. People, don't fall for it. Just because Jake has a soft voice and a clean face, doesn't mean his intentions are always good. You don't know him. I've never seen a channel grow to nearly 1 million subscribers so fast and then speedrun its own demise by becoming the corporate greed it exposes. Bravo, Jake. Bravo. For someone with a previously pretty clean image, 
This would only be the beginning in a pattern of behavior where Jake would make a video denouncing something and then sort of tell you the version of the thing that he just trashed. It doesn't help that as of the time of me recording this video, the value of the Cunning Wolf Society NFTs fell off a cliff. Looking specifically at the dates of the value collapse, a few days after the project went public and Jake's video went up, it dropped significantly and then it just never quite recovered. Moving forward in time, on May 3rd, he uploaded a video titled, Oh, so they do want to keep you poor. This was quickly changed to, ironically, lotteries are literally a scam. In this video, he would talk about the origins of the lottery and how predatory it is. In reality, the only real winners of the lottery are the bureaucrats and politicians. All the poor people are just suckers they take advantage of. Yeah, I want my tickets too. And I'm buying the Knicks and Steffi Graf. This is the lottery, the covert tax on poor people. He would then go on to promote the sponsor of the video, a lottery. Lotteries are predatory. They play on our psychology to suck us dry of our hard-earned money. But what if lottery psychology could be used for good? What if lottery psychology could be used to incentivize you to save money and build wealth instead of keeping you poor? Well, that's where Yada comes in. Play the no-lose lottery by pausing the video and clicking the link below. His fans caught him pretty fast with a considerable number of them voicing their concern and skepticism in the comments. He debunks the lottery while deceiving his viewers into another lottery. Incredible. <laughs> 1 1.2 thousand likes. Jake. Lotto is a scam. Jake's ad. Play my lotto. It's not a scam. <laughs> 1.8k likes. You can leave it up to Jake to first completely kill an industry with arguments and call all clients who fall for the trap suckers and still convince his viewers to buy his sponsors products in the same industry he just murdered. Jake, I really like your work, but I'm getting really sketchy feelings of the things you're promoting to us. This looks a lot like a Ponzi scheme. Please don't take us for granted, especially not when you're informing us about the evils of lotteries and Ponzi schemes in the same video. This wouldn't just stay contained within the comments of this particular uh, quote unquote documentary, a YouTube channel with no name very helpful and easy to find, thank you, would upload Should We Be Worried About Jake Tran, which racked up 24k views at the time of me writing the script. This video would echo similar sentiments to the comments, proving that people had taken notice of the cracks forming in Jake's reputation. Viewers have noticed this is some pretty shifty behavior. He's misusing the trust that we, the audience, have in him to take his earnings of likely over 200k per month and get even richer. Sure, he calls himself a capitalist. It should be noted that this section is no longer included in his bio. Also, he changed the title of the video to, oh, so it is all a scam. Although it's unclear if it's because of the backlash or just because he was working the YouTube algorithm. It's a weird form of manipulation, getting our guard down by criticizing competitor lotteries just to sell us something similar in the same video. While this particular sponsor Yada seems to have positive reviews from what I can see, this would only serve to further damage the relationship that he'd cultivated between him and his audience. The blank space YouTuber that I previously mentioned would follow up on a successful video on Jake with two others that further picked him apart, providing more examples of suspicious sponsors that Jake promoted to his audience. So yeah, my guy is earning at least 90% profit, which is a girl boss move, but... All that money and he still feels the need to try and earn more by advertising scammy sponsors? Whoops. Although, perhaps luckily for Jake, this story had remained relatively small for someone with over a million subscribers. Excellent video, just discovered your YouTube channel and I'm very impressed. He just got exposed by CoffeeZilla. Jake Tran. Jake Tran, Jake Tran, Jake Tran, Jake Tran actually makes pretty good content when he's not selling these get rich quick schemes. On August 5th, Jake Tran caught the eye of the Papa YouTuber CoffeeZilla, known for exposing shady NFT projects. This video focused specifically on the NFT sponsors and packaged Jake Tran's hypocrisy into a short and easy to digest expose. And what I noticed is that Jake makes these videos exposing scams, but then often uses the same tactics of the scam to then pitch you like a sponsor that's in the same lane. Back in the Wolf of Wall Street days, you would just shove penny stocks down people's throats and take a giant commission. A few years back, it might have been selling a stock trading bot or a forex trading bot that supposedly makes you money while you sleep. But today we have something even better, even more tempting, a crypto trading bot. Now, right after learning that crypto trading bots are the new tempting way to get people to give you their money, guess what Jake Tran advertises? And the product itself is actually legit. You can set up your own custom bots based on your parameters, deploy them to start trading automatically with your money, see the trades come in and withdraw your money. Like it's almost breathtaking, isn't it? Like to see someone denounce a scam and then in the same breath be like, you know, it's not a scam, the same thing. Now, finally, the mounting criticisms against Jake weren't just contained to his comment section or the occasional upload from a small YouTuber. It was now a 700k view video. I was already distrustful of Jake when he promoted his own course 
where you can 100% guarantee to get a remote work job, in the same video where he was calling out fake gurus that sell their get rich quick courses. Jake is the embodiment of you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Numerous aspects of his brand were picked apart and with that came even more examples of Jake shilling sketchy sponsors. Now up until this point people had speculated that Jake was picking these sponsors to appear on the videos that they did because no one would be dumb enough to actually fall for it. It was an experiment to test his subscribers or something of that nature. Well, uh, let, let's see about that. As CoffeeZilla's video gained more and more attention and Jake's most recent upload was being bombarded with dislikes, he would be forced to respond. So did these rumors have any merit to them? Was this all just one big elaborate joke that Jake was playing on his sponsors? What did you expect out of a channel that teaches you how to be evil? LOL. In all seriousness, I put my heart and soul into making free, premium videos. Every sponsor on this channel helps fund this channel <laughs> so we can keep upping the quality and quantity. You're not going to be the right fit for every sponsor on this channel, and that's okay. I'm pretty sure no one was the right sponsor for GM Token or the Cunning Wolves Society. So if you don't like the sponsors, skip the ad, don't buy from them, or unsubscribe from the channel. And then there's also the thing about like, hey, just don't click it if you don't like it. Just unsubscribe. But I don't think Jake realizes that this undermines every single one of his videos because why would you complain about tobacco or DuPont or any of these evil businesses when they could just turn around and say the same thing like, hey, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Unsubscribe. Why are you buying our cancer sticks, right? Like, which would obviously be missing the point, but is the exact same argument. And let the people who are the right fit for the sponsors use them. <laughs> but I genuinely love it. <laughs> But I genuinely love and appreciate all my sponsors because they allow me to do all of this for you guys. And most importantly, I love all of you more than you could ever realize. <laughs> You've all changed my life in every way possible. Lots of cool stuff coming as usual. We're gonna push forward as usual. I apologize for nothing. Smiley face. Stay dangerous. CoffeeZilla gave a brief comment about this statement on Twitter. TLDR, he regrets nothing, we'll keep doing it. Scum influencers are learning that you can scam your fans as much as you want and literally nothing will happen to you. Don't apologize and keep posting. Real. It's clear from the replies to this community tab post that this response left a bad taste in people's mouth. And while I won't read all the replies this time because it's going to get pretty repetitive, you can see for yourself that people aren't happy. It doesn't help that the timing of this controversy is right as people are getting fed up with his presence on his own channel diminishing. His most recent videos are, for a majority of the runtime, voiced over by people other than Jake. In 1821. That's not... That, that's not Jake. I feel like Jake put his channel on autopilot ever since he expanded into a full team. For him, this channel is now nothing but money. He does not narrate the videos anymore, he has probably hired someone else to do the video research and some other person to edit the videos. He only takes small videos off of his phone for intro and outro. On top of that, he has started promoting super shady stuff in the last few months. Jake became the exact thing he warned us about, GG well played. How to make a Jake train video. Read a few paragraphs on Wikipedia, make title most evil something in the world, grab easily accessible archival. Put some flashy overlays found on any stock website, add sound effects, add annoying voiceover. Don't forget your sponsorship, they're done. And your viewers will be wowed. And you know, on the one hand, I do really appreciate the honesty of this. But on the other, much more important hand, uh, you're kind of admitting that you don't care if your audience gets scammed by you, which it seems really wrong. In the minds of his fans, Jake Tran sold out. And as a result, lost the trust that he'd been building for years. He threw away his integrity in exchange for a quick buck. I don't give a fuck about any of you. I am in this for your money and your money only. That's all I care about. Fuck the fans. No sarcasm. No joking. Fuck the fans. Instead of saying, hey, maybe I shouldn't have promoted those obviously suspicious coins that's value has collapsed almost immediately, he chose to basically say fuck you to the fans who felt betrayed, which turned out to be a lot of people. And that is why Jake Tran's audience turned on him. 